Okay, welcome everybody to the cloud uh, hands-on troubleshooting session. Um, I'm Patrick from Linux Polska, where I work as a senior technology ar architect. Um, I currently uh, am, am focused on developing different solutions for OpenStack, and um, I hold a few certificates like Splunk certified architect and Red Hat certified architect. I'm also an instructor and I teach Red Hat and Mirantis classes. Um, so we're gonna have a, se a hands-on session. Uh, it will be divided, in, divided into three parts. The first one is a lab introduction. Uh, the second is actually split into two sub parts. The first one is um, you setting up the environment on your own devices. And in the meanwhile, I give you the presentation about that troubleshooting. So after that, we're gonna do the third part together, which is hands-on. Okay, let's start with the, with the lab. Um, there are pen drives run there, a lot of them. So grab one from a from, uh, person next to you and copy out the content into your device. Um, there is a virtual machine in there, virtual appliance, uh, import it. And this is actually the lab number one. You set up in the, uh, the environment. And in the meantime, as you will be set up in this, this thing, I will give um, introduction into troubleshooting presentation. So we'll met we'll meet in this blue point, which is lab number two. Uh, please don't proceed to lab number two until I complete my presentation. Um, I'll show you how to import this machine. Um, what I have here is actually the content of the USB device, so just click on the OVA file and then import it, agree to the license, and just, just wait a couple minutes. So are there any questions so far? Uh, there are four folks with me with the same t-shirts. If you need some assistance, just raise your hand and they will help you. They will reach you. Is everything clear up to this point? Okay. Who has the pen drive now? Only two people? Okay, that's better. Uh, let's look how my import look like. Okay, so after the import, please start this VM. And this is actually lab number one completed. So, please do it on your own. Okay, so let's start with uh, part number two, which is a presentation and I will um, I'll try to explain you what actually troubleshooting is. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, we have pretty much no latest memory or can we? Yeah, you can you can adjust it, but it will be probably swapping if you if you are under three. Could be oh, three. No. Okay. okay. Um, <coughs> so. We all intuitively know what troubleshooting is. We all know that this is uh, a nice thing to have uh, to maintain a complex system, such, an op such as an OpenStack. 
Uh, but what we usually forget about is that a troubleshooting is uh, a must have. Is it is a prerequisite for uh, developing and uh, maintaining complex systems. So it's not only needed for uh, just for maintaining, but it, it is a requisite for, for developing. And troubleshooting usually consists of four phases. First one is just an ident identification of what is not working, what's malfunctioning. Um, the second phase is finding the possible causes of the problem, of the issues. And um, what's important here is that we are not trying to eliminate the problem at this point. We do not try to fix the, the results of the problem, just the root cause. And uh, the good practice is to make a list because there might be many possible um, causes and put away, just pr put a probability into this list and sort this list and start eliminating the problem with the most probable causes. That's the point number three, elimination of, of causes. And then we can proceed to the confirmation. Uh, so that this is just a kind of test that it is working again. A good practice um, is to write uh, some kind of guide, a so-called cookbook. Uh, if someone else will spot onto this problem, then uh, he can use a cookbook and have a ready-to-go solution. Uh, but a good troubleshooting platform usually uh, is capable of optimizing all of these steps. So yeah, this is a nice to have feature. Um, so we so let me um, explain what kind of trouble problems issues we are going to address. I divided the displays into four classes. The first one is uh, uh, the actually the easiest problems. Something is not working at all. Uh, they are easy to solve because um, after uh, changing something, it's working again usually. So it only requires an insight capability. Uh, the second class are uh, the problems where something is actually working, but not as it is sup supposed to. So I don't know, the Nova is um, responding, but it's rejecting all of um, all of the requests. And this these problems are medium to solve, and uh, they require um, some kind of analysis. Uh, the third class are actually mm, an extended version of the second class, which are problems when something is not functioning correctly, but the problems are not seen in this uh, malfunctioning component, but, but in the other components. You can think about different OpenStack components cooperating and something is not working, like, I don't know, Keystone uh, in the back, and then you will see problems in the in the other components. If your hardware switch is not working, then you will probably see problems in um, Nova, for instance. So uh, these are really hard to diagnose and they usually require a uh, capability of correlation of dif different events coming from different components. So the last um, but not least class, uh, the problems which were there and magically disappeared. So we did nothing and the problem is not longer and not longer there. So uh, these kind of problems are impossible to find without proper solution because you need uh, capability of uh, historical analysis. And if you have it, then these problems are medium to solve. Uh, so not m no, it, it doesn't matter what actually your problem is. Uh, what is important here is that is the fact that we we have to have the knowledge, be able to gather this knowledge, process it, to to find to to shoot the problems. So let me give you a small introduction into what actually uh, knowledge is. It is literally any any piece of information, any portion of of data. It can be a line log line, it can be um, some kind of event, API response, and even a logical architecture of your system is, uh, a, is a kind of knowledge. 
So in order to fix the problems uh, with an ease, we need we need a platform for for capable for organizing this knowledge. And let me um, uh, explain that the, the the nature of the knowledge is quite nasty when it comes to complex systems like OpenStack, because the knowledge is present in many sources. It exists in many in many formats. It's is being transported in many different ways, and sometimes it is only available on demand. So, think about increasing the verbosity of the locks, for instance. And well, this knowledge usually requires uh, a process of transformation to be uh, to be available for for digging for processing. So uh, in the next couple of slides, I'm going to extend these points and explain you what exactly uh, I mean uh, in, in, in these points. So uh, let's start with sources and for formats of the knowledge. Probably the most popular uh, thing are the logs. They, um, they, are, they exist in a text or binary formats and um, the locks are formatted into various ways. I had a, a nice example on the slide. This is uh, a listing from the NovaConf. I, I just uh, take out three different format strings. Uh, they are more in this config file. So single, single components such as Nova are logging in very different ways in a single file. Uh, Here's an example of the compute log. I have the, uh, some IDs highlighted and the corresponding ones in, in the resulting log uh, are also highlighted with the same colors. So what we see here is, is really nasty because here are four, u four IDs for the request user, tenant, and instance. And as you can see in the log file, these IDs are written in three different formats, with rec in front, without dashes, and with dashes. So this is this requires some kind of normalization to be to be processed. Uh, so we definitely need a, some kind of tool capable of of, of doing this. Another good uh, source for the knowledge are script execution. Uh, scripts usually write to standard output or mm, into the file. And um, well, in scripts you can do ev literally everything. So the, the format of the outputs vary. Uh, it's usually up to you. And um, scripts can be executed periodically in um, every five minutes, let's say, or only on demand if you need to get deeper for a while, like um, increasing verbosity. So uh, we can use a script, for instance, to compare the knowledge of libvirt against the knowledge of Nova. If there is a difference in, in the list of running instances, then we have a problem. Um, Another source of knowledge are the API responses. We, we should be capable of uh, asking API for some kind of knowledge. And these responses are usually uh, some kind of markup, markups like XML or JSON. And as an example, we Salometer is a, a good place to ask about, um, for instance, um, um, this guy ops of virtual machine. Uh, having um, opportunity to um, speak different kind of protocols is also an advantage. If we could uh, use, for instance, an open flow to uh, ask for uh, dump, dumping, to ask for dumping uh, table flows in open vSwitch, that's that's really powerful. That's becoming more and more powerful. And as you probably uh, know, the, the databases are designed are designed to store the knowledge, but we usually don't look that deep. Uh, of course, you can, 
for instance, with, some, with a script. But uh, uh, most of the knowledge available in the database are accessible v via APIs. So this, this is a better way to, to get this. Uh, and uh, there are many, many more. I will stop on this point uh, because I, I just wanted to give you um, the brief introduction into uh, where the knowledge <coughs> is. And what is uh, crucial is that this, the, the knowledge coming from different sources is not correlated. Uh, it means that these uh, subsequent events are not linked anyhow. We need to be capable of linking them, organizing them. Uh, uh, think about uh, a process of provisioning an instance. If you order an instance in the Nova via, via the Nova API, it will dispatch this request into Neutron, Cinder, Glance, and so on. This can be distributed across different different servers, different machines, and it all is correlated. Actually, it all uh, is uh, uh, it, it all regards one request of provisioning an instance. So the correlation is another must-have for troubleshooting. Um, traveling to work requires choosing a transportation, uh, like a bike, train, a car, and so on. It's the same with the transport of this knowledge. Uh, it can be transported in uh, protocols, as uh, raw events protocols like UDP or TCP, but uh, if you're using some kind of solution like uh, Syslog, uh, it has th its own format, so the events are transported in a Syslog packets. If you're using more sophisticated solutions uh, like Logstar or Splunk, they use their own f forwarders and they use their own custom protocols, so we have to be able to speak all of this to gather this, this, this knowledge into in one place. Uh, and uh, another nice to have feature is, uh, is capability of SNMP walks and SNMP gets. Uh, and this is how we can ask for something in the IPMI. And as I already uh, mentioned, the, the speaking REST protocol <coughs> when speaking, when, when, when calling API is also uh, what we need. Um, so, when we dig for the knowledge, uh, uh, it, um, it can be already there. I mean, uh, lock forwarders or things like syslog, remote syslog, are sending the logs every time. So we will receive this knowledge anyway. It's coming constantly, uh, but uh, a uh, nice capability is to have the knowledge on demand. And I will give you an example in a minute. Uh, so I have a, um, a table in here. And uh, this is when uh, the first column described when we, when, when we are digging for the knowledge. So um, from time to time, we dig in real time. What I mean is that we want to observe what is actually um, being run, uh, what is what is being done right now in this moment, and this uh, requires a cap capability of life analysis, and is a prerequisite for triggering some alerts. And this is a proactive behavior of troubleshooter, uh, and pro being proactive is always better than being reactive. So, um, the other example is an on-demand knowledge. This is what I mentioned uh, before. Um, on demand is when you ask to go deeper just for a while. Uh, it is, for example, when you increase verbosity I in some components, we can't do this. We can't put all the components in the debug level because uh, it's a big performance degradation. But we, from time to time, we need this. And uh, another nice thing is that we can um, 
get the knowledge from the switch, we can tell the, um, the, the, the modern switches to uh, set trap on some port and send us a callback if, if uh, this port is suffering from micro bursting, for instance. So that's, a, that's a nice feature. And uh, last but not least, uh, we dig for knowledge post factum. So uh, we just want to know what happened, what had happened. So this is, uh, this is just a historical analysis. Um, another step in order to, to build a good troubleshooting platform is to transform the knowledge. And this process of transformation uh, usually starts with uh, normalizing or attaching timestamps. If there are no timestamp in the event, we, we just need to attach one. But if there is, we need a normalization. Different services, different uh, operating systems, different uh, devices are using different formats. So we don't we, we want to use just one when we are looking for, for something. And um, another thing is um, extracting the fields for further processing. These are usually presented in a key value purse. And I have an example here of using a regular expression, uh, PCRE, and to get this instance ID out of this log line and match against this regular expression and put the result into the field, into the key called Nova instance IP. And here is um, uh, how it might look in a troubleshooting platform. Uh, key and value, these fields are extracted. So uh, uh, extraction could be done uh, according to markups, if you're using JSON and X XML, Actually, the key value par pairs are already there. The only step uh, we need is to just index them, extract them. Okay, um, another step of transformation is attaching the host name and source fields. We need to know from what point of our infrastructure events come. And um, about the source, the, the source can be um, script execution uh, and uh, it could be some kind of file so and, and so on. So mm. Okay, and um, another step involves merging multiple line events. Uh, a good example are the stack traces being usually written into the you know, open stack logs. And although the stack traces are written into different lines, uh, these lines doesn't make sense uh, if they are not together. So uh, this transformation includes uh, merging events into bigger pieces. They are related. Okay, uh, to accelerate the future processing, knowledge has to be indexed and mm, uh, we we talk about two kinds of transformation modes. Uh, the first is the index time transformation. It is done when the uh, pieces of, of information arrive at the time of approach. So this is when we put the timestamp or normali normalize it. Uh, this is when uh, we uh, could match against some regex and put source and host name fields into the event. Uh, but some of the things can be done later, and this is actually a good practice to do some things later. You can, uh, for example, uh, have a new regex to extract something new from your logs. And the best practice involves uh, using both of these modes. It's called it hybrid mode. Uh, okay, um, a good troubleshooting platform needs um, even more features, not only gathering and processing the knowledge, as it was already stated, but also things like um, presenting the knowledge, um, graphs, charts, visualizations, and so on. Um, 
important, I would say, that even crucial thing is to be agnostic. Uh, ha it doesn't matter what kind of deployment tools you use for your OpenStack. It doesn't matter what operating systems you run or what hypervisor are you using. Uh, it all needs to be gathered and understand in one place because it is all related. And uh, to make the knowledge available, we need to expose it uh, via API. And um, yeah, I think I already mentioned about generating reports and triggering alerts. Uh, there, are, there, there are even more like high availability, scalability, <coughs> elasticity, and and so on. So uh, this is it for the presentation. Um, let's proceed to the part number three, which is um, troubleshooting. Let me pre prepare myself. Okay, so uh, in a minute, you're you're going to run a script which will broke your your OpenStack installations. And you can use uh, poor admin tools for troubleshooting, uh, but um, the Cloud Bliss is installed into this virtual machine as well, so you can use this platform. Uh, it's capable of doing an inside intelligence analysis um, and troubleshooting. So we will use, and I will use this during the presentation, further presentation for the troubleshooting purposes. Uh, Cloud Bliss is a troubleshooting platform which can do everything which was mentioned during this presentation and, and even more. Um, so um, we will probably uh, make, it, uh, make this lab environment available uh, after the, mm, in a few weeks. So if you are not here, or if you uh, don't manage to complete the labs right now, you will have an opportunity in future. Uh, how many of you have this VM up and running? Okay, <coughs> quite good. Are there any questions uh, on the, at this point? Um, does anyone need some guidance or assistance? Okay, so the, the, there, there are a few guys with me, they could help you, just don't hesitate to ra ask, raise your hand. Okay, so if everything's clear, let's start lab with uh, lab number two. Uh, which is login. Uh, we we use Cloud Bliss for the passwords everywhere. Okay, I'm in. And run the script. Lab start, uh, which uh, which will break things. So in a minute, your OpenStack will suffer from some problems, and we will proceed to the further labs to fix them. Okay. In the meantime, run your browser. And visit local host. At port 8000. Um, this virtual appliance was configured to mm, to forward ports, so we are connecting to the local host, and this connection is forwarded to to the appliance. Um, 
Okay. And in the second tab, please open the OpenStack dashboard and log into the horizon with the demo, demo user. Again, the password is Cloud Bliss. And what we can see here is that we had a lot of instances in this project in various states. Some are active, some are just rebooting now, and some of them are <coughs> shut off. Mm, so uh, let me give you a brief introduction into what we see here in a cloud, please. And let's start with a summary dashboard. Mm, so uh, actually, what you see here is a demo of Cloud Bliss. It's limited to this uh, environment. You have an, uh, one node installation of OpenStack, and this greatly simplifies things. And so uh, there's only one host. And here we can see uh, in the first panel events generated uh, by, by this host. As you can see, there are over uh, 3,000 of them. And this, um, this machine is running for 20 minutes right now, so that's a lot. Here, here is an, a, a table uh, with an, uh, services and an information if they are configured during the boot time of and uh, if they are active or dead right now. This panel uh, represents, um, divides the messages into different severity categories, like audit, debug, error, info, and so on. And there is a count and a trend. We just started this machine, so we won't see any trend. Uh, and this is what I like the most. Uh, this is a table presenting different uh, various op uh, OpenStack components and how many logs of uh, different, uh, different severity this component produce. So for instance, uh, seeing their API extensions produce a lot of audit messages. And it's the same in here, uh, but on a graph. So you could click on the graph you you will be moved to uh, the raw events which uh, which produce this which are this uh, mm, these events. Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, another useful useful tab is an open stack errors. Uh, here's the list of the components and uh, how many errors uh, there is in this component. So as you can see, uh, our OpenStack is probably broken. There's a lot of things which, which are not working. Uh, so actually, this thing is a limited version of uh, the previous dashboard because it only uh, shows you what's, what is not working. And the same thing uh, on a chart, on a bar chart. And here we can see the raw events which, uh, which are being taken into, into account. Okay, so enter the uh, search tab and um, click a data summary. What I like here is that we, ha we, we can have some kind of global view um, in, in one point into our infrastructure. As you can see, uh, we only have one host, but it's producing events with three different host names. So this is not really good. And the second tab represents the sources of the knowledge. Uh, most of them on the list are mm, the logs. So these are the log paths, like var log, swift, proxy log. And uh, here are the source types of uh, these different, different logs, like Cinder API log. 
So the source type is actually uh, a clue how to transform these kind of events. Okay, so mm, this is it for lab number two. And now it's your turn. <laughs> Feel free to ask and I will give you a few minutes to, 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 do, the, to do the same. And uh, what I forget about, uh, I had a printed version of the labs, but it is available in the PDF on your mm, in this, uh, USB content. So just open this PDF and um, there's an introduction and goal of this lab and the solution described. Okay, are there any questions? Yeah. Um, did you manage to log in? Okay. Um, we had a lot of t-shirts like this one, so uh, please ask <laughs> questions <laughs> to get them. <laughs> yes? Okay. You want a t-shirt? You have to ask a question. Okay. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> So what's your question? Um, well, this question is um, quite tough, actually, uh, because uh, we currently are developing this solution for less than a half a year, and we just uh, want to show you this and get a feedback. So most of the components are open source, and but partially they are not. So uh, if you want the uh, details, uh, just uh, I'll give you after the presentation. Okay. Yes? Actually, you can execute these commands, although it's not what we are actually doing, because uh, all of the knowledge which will be present uh, by executing any uh, Python client commands are, uh, are available via API, so we prefer to, to use API. Yes, yes. So uh, it is... Uh, the output of the APIs are are presented there, yes, as um, as a path to the script executing the IP API calls. Yes. And uh, we totally focus on the open stack, so this is our advantage. So we spend a lot of time into um, getting things work, and now we have a platform which is easy extendable. So in a f in a few weeks, you will uh, receive uh, this thing with preloaded dashboards, and uh, partially yes, partially yes. Uh, okay, uh, so. Okay. Okay. Hello. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, I have a question before we. Why are you oh, here? Okay. Here I am. <laughs> uh, how does CloudBliss read the logs? So, does it require some kind of keys to go into the OpenStack machine? 
read the logs, come back to the interface? Uh, so we actually are, uh, can get the logs anyhow via syslog and via forwarders. So yeah, it's up to you. So do we need to uh, give Cloudbase, uh, first of all, do we need to install Cloudbliss on a separate machine or it can be an OpenStack machine? Uh, yeah, it has to be uh, present into every machine which generates logs, uh, but only the forwarder part. On, so the cloud list uh, consists of two main parts. This is the engine. Mm -hmm. uh, what you see here is the engine and uh, some kind of dashboard for the users. And each uh, OpenStack machine uh, has uh, forwarder installed. So we ask forwarder to forward logs and to execute commands on demand. So do we need a minimum one machine installation of CloudBase or I yeah, should have? Uh, yeah, one machine is enough. Is enough. It, it, it depends on how many logs you have, how, how, how much of them you want to uh, index uh, and search. All right, thanks. Yes. So we uh, actually are version agnostic. <laughs> so uh, we, we make a platform which is capable of uh, organizing the knowledge. Uh, you can use it for, not for OpenStack, for instance. So Question? Uh, Question for example, uh, you can, uh, I don't know, use a, a VMware lock format and get it there. So. Uh, question, um, question here. Yes. So, um, could you please describe uh, the Splunk integration with this one and see okay, how so Splunk is integrated with yes, this? Yeah. Uh, yes, the Splunk is, uh, is in there. So we use uh, Splunk as uh, a core engine for uh, indexing the knowledge, mm -hmm. for getting the knowledge and indexing it. Okay, uh, let me proceed to lab, to another lab. Okay, so... Uh, I answer more questions uh, after the next lab. We have to. We have a tight schedule. So, uh, what time is it? So, in this lab number three. Um, Who has a question? Okay. So, one more question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just wanted to understand what sort of. Um, information we can get uh, from the neutron side, side, say for example, looking inside VXLAN or GRE tunnels, uh, rather than looking in the log, do you have a, a way of pulling data out of that to analyze? Yeah, so um, actually how deep you get is, is also up to you. You can, forward, you can forward all of the information and make it available in this platform. And this uh, includes uh, what Neutron has in the da database, it's available via API, but also uh, you can dump flows from Open vSwitch, and if you're using some kind of ML2 plugin, and there are switches which are capable of sending the logs. So, so, so to clarify that, the f for example, with Open vSwitch flow dumping, can you do that from your interface? Is that possible? Um, so, uh, in this demo, we are only uh, a consumer, from the consumer part. We're not available to uh, enter, to uh, use any commands on demand. Uh, but, uh, yes, this feature is, uh, is available, but it requires you a, a, a tiny trick. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. Yes? Um, I have uh, three questions, actually. The oh, OK. <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> no, well, it, maybe it, it, uh, one, one isn't really a question. It's just, is there any way uh, you could either hold the microphone closer, or if maybe they could turn it up, because it's hard to hear you. Um, okay. But uh, the, the main question was, how easy is it to, um, to extend this to analyze extra log files? Like yeah. if I have a product with other log files in there that could be incorporated? Yeah, so uh, um, it depends on what you, what you want. Because gathering the knowledge is really simple. But if, uh, if you want to uh, process it, 
you need to do things like field extractions uh, and so on. So, yeah, so, so it's up to uh, how, how do you want to use it. But it's possible and it's... Yes, it just, is. Just yeah. to have Yes, of course. Okay. Well, uh, so uh, one of the nice features is that uh, if you already are using uh, some kind of a troubleshooting platform or central log solution, you can, uh, you can uh, fill CloudBliss with all these logs you previously have and start with historical analysis. What we are actually working uh, now is uh, integration with uh, ELK, so Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. And uh, I think that, we, that this, this, this is a good step into uh, the open stack uh, because uh, uh, there are rumors that it's being used. <laughs> and uh, my other question was about uh, heuristic analysis or like, or like event, cor event correlation, this kind of thing. Is there something in there other than just looking at trends to see like as, like maybe uh, add rules to, to say if, if I see this kind of event in this log and this kind of event here, then it can kind of conclude something more interesting from yeah, the combination of those. A, we call it transition, yes. Yeah, you can do things like this. You can describe your own uh, uh, rules to combine logs to make them uh, one piece of knowledge uh, and process them. It's, it's not, um, I would say, it's not really easy. You, it requires you to spend 15 minutes in learning how transition works, but it's available. Okay. okay. So, um, as I understand now, uh, CloudBlaze is based on uh, Splunk. Uh, where are you? Over here. Okay. Yes, uh, that's true. It's based on Splunk, and you're looking to integrate uh, Elasticsearch, Kibana, and uh, yes. Logstash? Yes. In replacement or uh, in addition to uh, Splunk? Uh, well, that's, uh, that's a tough question. We, uh, we love to hear your feedback. And uh, well, it's, it depends on the uh, on the your use case. So uh, we just plank uh, up to this point because uh, it's uh, well, it's it's, it's really uh, easy to extend it. And when uh, speaking of Elasticsearch, we we would need um, um, to go really deep in the code and, and change these components because they are not ready to, uh, to they are not so mature as, as Splunk. Oh, thank you. Okay, so let's proceed to lab number three, unless there are no more questions. Okay, that's great. Uh, so the lab is quite simple. Uh, so uh, one of the cloud customers uh, called our support services and said that uh, his application stopped responding so he logged into the instance and see, saw the I.O. errors. Uh, having nothing better to do, he rebooted the instance and this is not working anymore. So the, is, the instance is, not, is, is down right now. And uh, this is all we knew. This is all we know. Uh, so um, actually there are two problems. The one problem was uh, already described. The other problem is that our support services uh, didn't wrote the name of this guy and didn't wrote anything like an instance name um, and so on so we <laughs> we need to <laughs> we need to find this information and uh, because we have nothing better to do we can start with uh, viewing the summary and a good point is to look at the services which are enabled at the boot time, but they are not working right now. So th there's one like this. It's TGT daemon. Um, it's enabled, but it's inactive right now. So let let TGT be our f number f number one suspect. Um, okay, now 
Let's take a look into the OpenStack errors tab and into the recent errors. As you can see, there is a quite nasty log containing the stack trace of, of ANOVA. And this log ends with an information that uh, libvirt has an error. And the error was, uh, it cannot attach this volume. And here in the path of this volume, you can see that it's being transported via iSCSI protocol. So uh, it makes sense, TD, TD, TGTD is not running and there's a problem uh, with iSCSI. So there are more logs. This, this, uh, this lengthy one comes from the Oslo messaging component. And what we uh, can do right now is uh, um, we can use our knowledge, <laughs> not only the knowledge which is there. So we know that Nova is responsible for ra running the instances. So I'm not interested really in what all slow messaging is saying. I'm more in interested in what Nova knows right now. So uh, there should be a Nova here. Yes, there is. The Nova Compute Manager produces one error. If you click in there, you will be moved to the search bar and you will get an error like this. It, it says that uh, this request um, project and user and um, this instance cannot boot, cannot boot this instance. If you click on this arrow, you'll see the, uh, the um, fields extracted in the search time and here is the list of the fields. So up to this point, we know what host is affected, what instance is affected, and what project is affected. That's a lot, and it doesn't matter if, if you have a thousand of instances or a thousand of, of uh, compute nodes. It's, it's usually as easy as it is seen here. So let me copy out this instance ID because we'll need this in future. Okay, and the, th the thing I really like is that if you put here just an instance ID, all of the events will be limited to this con regarding this instance. So as you can see, it's um, something regarding this instance uh, happened in two hosts and comes from seven different sources of, of uh, knowledge from Neutron, Nova, Horizon, and some custom-made scripts of Cloud Bliss. Um, okay, um, so we know that probably the, the root cause of the problem is uh, TGTD, and it's responsible for the iSCSI transportation, and uh, it locks into the var log messages. So why don't we look into the var log messages? Um, you could put source equals var log messages in here, but I know that this kind of log is forwarded by the syslog. So I'm looking for this syslog events, and yeah, it's definitely not working. Something is failing. So I'm now pretty sure that TGTD1 is not running and uh, this is the root cause. And I know what instance is, is affected. The user said that it cannot, he can't reboot an instance and we saw this in the logs. Okay, so let me log into the virtual machine. Uh, SSH is forwarded on AT22 port. And of course, we use CloudBliss as a password. OK, 
okay, so why don't we start TGT daemon? Okay, up and running. So uh, let's refresh what's in syslog. Okay, um, just look in the last 15 minutes. And syslog is, as you can see, TGT daemon is, uh, and iSCSI transportation is operational now <coughs> from, from this, for, for the first line of blocks. So that's good. And let's move back to the console and put some OpenStack commands. First of all, source the admin credentials, which are available in Keystone RC admin file. And uh, let's see what Nova knows about a, an instance with this, this ID. <coughs> okay, so there's a long output. Um, it's long because it contains a stack trace. So we now, we can see that uh, an instance is in an error state. So we solve the root cause, but we need to bring this instance to li alive again. And this is the stack trace. So let's try starting this instance. And well, we can't. Why we can't? Because the instance is in a, an er error state. So the, the easiest solution is to, to, to change the state manually of this instance. And there is a special Nova command for this called reset state. So by default, it resets state into the error. So I put an active manually here. Okay, so the state is resetted. We can start the instance, and, and I will do this with vish command. This is how we tell libvirt to start an instance. And by the way, uh, we don't have to use the instance name. We can use its UUID. So that's a nice feature of vish. And well, this is it. For the lab number three, I, I, uh, I've just shown you how to fix things, uh, and now it's your turn. <laughs> so good luck. <laughs> and uh, we'll start another lab in, in, in 10 minutes. Okay, so feel free to ask. Yes? Yes, yes. It actually only uh, connects to the Nova database and change the state from faulty in, in from the error into active. And that's all. But the instance is not running. You have to start it manually. Several times I have faced issue like I have deleted an instance yeah. manually from the CLI, but it still appears in the uh, in the horizon dashboard as the status has really yes. <laughs> And it throws the same error. So I wonder if the reset state can fix the same issue. Oh, maybe, yes. Okay. Maybe. So, thanks for the command. <laughs> and you can search through the uh, dashboard logs and dashboard events as well. So maybe there's some valuable, valuable information uh, in there. Why did you use uh, Virsh and uh, not Nova to start uh, To simplify things for now, because uh, it's uh, actually Nova thinks that this instance is running, so it it, it don't um, it doesn't allow us to to start it again. We we said we said Nova that this instance is active, so uh, we can't use a Nova command to activate this one more time. Yeah, this is this is a dirty hack, but uh, yeah, if you if you manage uh, OpenStack, this is uh, 
This is what you do every, every day. Uh, the question was what version of OpenStack we are using here, and this is a nice house. Yes. Which can, which are? Nova. Okay. I take a, a look. Uh, did you start this uh, lab stuff now? Uh, no, that's probably good. Okay, so, yeah, so your open stuff is working. <laughs> <laughs> you need to break it first. <laughs> well, it's quite pretty interesting to see there. Yes. <coughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay, why don't you grab a, a, a USB and import this machine again and start start it over? <laughs> no, no. OpenStack is really heavy, and Cloudless also <laughs> is quite quite heavy. Did you manage to run this in tablet? Yeah. This appliance, good tablet. Ah, <laughs> uh, you need to pull uh, all tenants dash dash all dash tenants. Yes, because we are listing what's in the admin project. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and what's broken, it's not in the admin project. Uh, I just changed the admin. Just, I changed the admin. Yes. Okay, let me let me type in something here. <laughs> That's better. <coughs> of course. Yeah. If you need to connect it to the Z packet from VM, you need to have a possibility to, me, to connect the transaction with the packets to the packet from VM. I need to check how oh, the interface is choosing between VM and Z packet from VM. 
Okay, so um, it is possible, but the question is, do you really need this? Because um, it, it will produce tons of blocks, tons. But you can, you can. And you can correlate each path, every single step in the path. It would be a little bit uh, difficult, even boring or annoying to go through the law. Yeah, so I, I, I wouldn't do this in production. I, I'm quite sure that this will degrade performance to, to zero. <laughs> Uh, no, it's it's more like you know uh, there's the the platform to organize the knowledge. You can put every literally everything in there, so it's everything. quite easy. Yeah, because you you, you, you my uh, scripts distributed to servers. Yeah, so what you're asking <coughs> is quite easy, really, um, because uh, if you attach the um, I don't know the check, you can. Um, Say the checksum of the packet in every single point and log it. So then you will see the path in there. So it, it is possible. It's not really easy, but after an hour or two, you, you will see. It. Uh, uh, do, uh, do you have a tea first? I, I bring you one. Voice, voice list will show this yeah, minimal voice count month in April. Yeah. So you can use me dash dash U U I D. Uh, so actually, no, no, it, uh, is, it is uh, it is being grabbed here the this ID. Yeah. Uh, with the name of this. Yes. But in the voice list, yeah. the the new list instance zero zero zero. Okay, so this is why you really need a publicity platform because uh, liquid has its own database and Nova has its own. Okay, okay. So the only thing which combines these two two, two databases are these new UIDs. Okay, okay so okay. in the in in the database of the uh, this uh, this got your name and all that. Can I help you? No, no, it's not okay. I don't know. Ah, oh, so you've already finished? Yeah. Wow, okay, that's great. Uh, now it's time to proceed to the lab number four. So the scenario is like this. Uh, we already fixed the problem, but there could be some quality of service or service level agreements in your company, and you need to write a report. Uh, you need to, uh, for instance, uh, determine the downtime. You need to put in here the, detail, the details like what project, what user, and what uh, instance were affected. So we, we still don't know who filled this uh, issue. It was someone. So let me, let me show you how can we find this information. So uh, we still have this ID of, of an instance. Um, I'm going to put it here and look for the events from the last, let's say, four hours. And there was a reboot word in, uh, in this problematic line. So yes, this is what I, I was looking for. Um, if you click in here, then you'll see a field extracted from this request, and this contains the project ID and the user ID. So the only thing we need to do now is to translate somehow this 
uh, IDs into the names. But we are pretty sure right now that this ID with this product was affected, instance with this ID was affected, and uh, this user was the one who rebooted the instance and he filled an issue. So uh, let me click in this and just look for all, all events containing this field. Um, Nova project ID. Uh, so in this project, there are probably many, many instances. Uh, let me find this, find it. Um, more fields. And yes. Nova instance ID. Okay, so if you select this field, Uh, it will be ready up there for a use. So, okay, so there's only one instance in this project which generates events during the past four hours. That's quite surprising, but it's possible. And uh, if you want to uh, get some additional information from the database, actually, uh, we can use special kind of macros in this platform, and uh, one of which is um, OS name project, for instance, project, OS name project. And uh, as a result, we received an additional field in here with the name of the project. So the project affected is, is, demo, is just a demo. You can map any IDs. We're grabbing um, live informa information from the a database via API calls and correlating this with the, the event lines. Uh, okay, so uh, we could uh, use another macros like map tenant, the name tenant, tenant. Um, not tenant, but instance. Instance. Okay, so uh, this field, this additional field, is not only present on the this um, interesting field list, but it's also attached to uh, every single line of of uh, to the every event. So if you click into this uh, in this arrow of an event, you will see additional field c fields called the name. So the instance name was Bliss. The affected instance was Bliss, and we've already seen this uh, in, in the logs. So the real question is, uh, which user filled an issue? So let me look for his ID, uh, this project, and reboot. Okay, so maybe we'll try to find all the uh, the name of this guy. OS name user. And we'll see additional field name here. So the username who clicked reboot and produced this line or this line of log is named demo. Uh, so up up to this point, we, we know what uh, project, what instance, and what user was affected. But the real question in this in the lab is, what other users were affected? They didn't notice, but they were affected with this problem. They had an access to those to this instance. So let me uh, delete the reboot field. And that way we'll see everything regarding this project, every user in this project. Uh, so the field name should contain more names like Darek, Patrick, and so on. So it was Demo who actually filled an issue 
but all of these users uh, might have filled those that issue. All of them were affected. So, um, the go good step uh, from this point is to generate some kind of report, which is out of this lab, but it's possible uh, and, and really easy. Um, so this is it for my, um, for my um, presentation on the lab number four. So your turn now. Do you have any questions? Do all of you have the t-shirts? <laughs> okay. Yes? Okay, I, I'll get to you. I can't hear you. Yes, there's Splunk is in, in the back end, yes. Yeah, yeah. So we build our solution on top of Splunk, actually. How does that work with the licensing? Is it like that? Oh, how does it work with licensing the... Um, so th this is the guy responsible. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, speak loud. Okay, so... Uh, the question. <laughs> yeah. The oh, I'm uh, just curious if you guys are using Splunk on the back-end side of it. How do you deal with their licensing models? Okay, so uh, so the idea is what we build is uh, actually an analytics on top of Splunk. So uh, the reason why, we've, uh, when, why we went with Splunk for this exercise is actually time that took us to come up with a working prototype and being able to test uh, different uh, ideas. Since there are no tools on the market that we could kind of uh, mimic, because uh, the idea of troubleshooting itself is somewhat uh, not explored, in our opinion. Uh, so uh, for this exercise, we, uh, we used the um, trial version, which eventually turns into free version, because Splunk is available with uh, such an option. If, uh, if someone would like to apply those ideas, those extractions, the, the, the analytics that we come up with, uh, should uh, actually acquire the, uh, the license that uh, Splunk requires them to have in, or in order to to, to, to uh, analyze the amount of data that they have. But to, uh, for us, it's more of an exercise, actually, in creating a tool than just applying the Splunk to the equation. So we're also looking actively into uh, building similar solution based on, for example, Elasticsearch and Logstash. Th those platforms are not kind of similar in features possible. and the capabilities uh, vary differently. I mean, can, can vary, especially in the uh, field of analysis and visualization. Like you can use Kibana to visualize, but uh, well, in Splunk you can leverage actually some pretty cool tricks when it comes to um, building prototypes, like on the real environments. So, um, what we'd like to exercise in the future is actually uh, go with a kind of a dual model, like uh, build a Elasticsearch and Logstash based tool. Uh, it will obviously be open source and provide additional capabilities utilizing Splunk as uh, an option for customers. So, uh, and actually the reason why we'll, we would like to show it to you, or we're showing it to you, is to actually get some feedback. I mean, is, is this or, or such a tool uh, interesting to uh, OpenStack deployers? Uh, should we, well, develop it further? In which direction? What kind of features should it have? Uh, should we should it more utilize Splunk or more utilize Elasticsearch and so on and so on? So. Yeah. 
No, I, so I think this tool is great, and um, I have my own reasons because um, last fall, uh, well, in the Hong Kong, uh, the uh, eBay chief architect CTO gave a talk about how the architecture was all around it and all the problems they had to debug and everything. And I actually had to go down to Kuala Lumpur uh, a few days after Flight 370 went missing to do a class down there on OpenStack. Well, my my development, my my lab went down right before that, and we did like Googling for two or three days before going down there, right? And none of the answers were correct. And we didn't get it up in time, and that's when I had that epiphany from Hong Kong last fall with eBay. But this tool would have probably would have helped a lot, right? Because we could have dove right down into it. So I think this is really good. I just need to, one question I have is, is maybe on the, uh, on the trunks, they're updated nightly, right? And there's actually thousands of lines of code that's updated weekly, right? How would you keep up with all the changes? I think that's probably one of my biggest questions. Well, yeah, it's actually, uh, it's something that you run into during development, is that uh, we had, a, on several occasions, we had a need to actually patch something in, a, uh, in, a, in OpenStack in order uh, to have a consistent logging. So, uh, well, we discovered some ways to actually uh, parameterize OpenStack to the point that it actually start logging the way we could leverage uh, the, the platform to the full extent, but um, the, the way we see it is the tool itself uh, can analyze any text, whether it's uh, Logstash, for example, or, uh, or Splunk, and for this particular case, it, it utilizes regular expressions, so it's, it's agnostic in this way. But uh, on the other side, it requires maintenance, because if someone changes the way the platform logs, then you have to adjust and retest your regular expressions, for example. Uh, if it's a more markup based, then probably it won't be so much of an issue, but, but it will re require maintenance. So we expect, it, if it's supposed to be a kind of an out of a box tool, it should be tested against major kind of a versions. So, and I, we don't see a way to escape it, actually, uh, at least yet, <laughs> so. What kind of hardware do you use for all your testing? I mean, is it just uh, white boxes, or what are you using for your testing? Uh, let me uh, interrupt you. Um, there's lab number five still to be done and um, it's quite easy and, and quick so just do it on your own and I will give a t-shirt to few first people completing this lab so just, just start it. I wish luck. So just oh, uh, this pres my presentation contains my um, contact to me, and it will be available. I want one card. You already have one. No. I want large. Okay. And 
you want to that's not a small okay, I thought we already have one. Okay, so I will meet you. Uh Mr. Najima Iarga. Okay. Um did you manage to, to read the route? Yeah, yeah, just pretty simple. Yeah, just pretty simple. So, so what was the name of the process? What? What was the name of this process, problematic process, system process? Oh, sorry, I got a paragraph of two and three. Okay. But in the middle, so. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Is available online. Yeah. I may demonstrate the same to my uh, colleagues. Yeah, so we will most probably, if uh, we had some small um, slides and such like that, yeah. but uh, in, a few, in a couple of weeks, we will, in a couple of weeks, it should be available on our, on our uh, website. We are, I, I, I can give you my card and make it available okay. earlier if you want. So, yeah, so that's it, the field of...